Recall from the previous video that we tested the partial effects of education and IQ. So we wanted to see how education affects wage keeping IQ constant and we wanted to see how IQ affects wage keeping education constant. constant. Now in this video let's introduce the concept of joint effect. So what the joint effect means for our case is that we want to see whether neither education nor IQ affect wage or at least one of them has an effect on wage meaning that the null hypothesis now we're gonna write it here below so the null hypothesis now is that there is no effect from education so the coefficient of education is zero and also the coefficient of IQ is zero and the alternative for us to reject this hypothesis we must have at least we must have at least one of these betas at least one beta must be different than zero so let's call at least one beta beta i where it could be the first or the second so if at least one of them is different than zero, it means we have at least one variable that is affecting our wage. Meaning that if we take education and IQ together jointly in the model, there's going to be a significant effect on wage. So we're testing, we're testing the joint significance. This is a test on joint, this is a test on joint effect of education and IQ on wage now recall that we will have variation in the wages of people for given education level and iq level because there's going to be specific factors that we cannot include in the model that we cannot observe that could be the level of schooling whether it was public or private that could be the social status whether the individual is from a rich or a poor family and so on so what we want to know is how much of the variation in the wages we are going to explain by using education and IQ together in the model relative to how much of the variation we cannot explain by these two variables, how much of the variation in the wages is going to be explained by the unexplained terms, by the specific factors that we do not observe. In other words, in other words, we want to know, we want to know the ratio of the sum of squared differences explained by our regression line which we call SSR relative to the number of variables that we're using in our model so we're using two variables education IQ let's call that the number of parameters that we are using divided by the sum of squared differences that are unexplained or of the error term so to speak and we divide that by the number of observations minus p minus one we're going to explain these divisions in a second this ratio is going to be tested with an f value so we're doing an f test we're doing an f test now the reason we divide by the number of parameters here and by this term over here is to standardize this sum of squared differences because the sum of squared differences in the regression so what is explained by the variables and the things that are unexplained by the variables take into account two different sources of variation so we have to normalize we have to standardize them by the respective degrees of freedom so in this case is the sum of square differences in the regression explained by the independent variables by the explanatory variables or so to speak by the parameters of the model so we standardize by that and the sum of square differences of the error of the unexplained variation is going to be standardized by the remaining degrees of freedom which will be n minus p minus one now what we're testing is what is the ratio how much of the variation is going to be explained by the regression relative to how much is not explained by the regression and intuitively we can argue that if this f value is going to be high enough so if we'll have let's say an f value of 11.4 for instance we're saying that there's 11.4 more variation explained by the model than not explained by the model let's let let's write, write that down to literally understand what the values mean we're speaking that the ratio between the average sum of square because that would be the average the mean sum of square differences of the regression explained by the regression and the mean sum of square differences of the error term not explained by the regression meaning that this ratio would be equal to 11.4 if we do some math here if we do a simple cross product we would see that msr would be equal to 11.4 times mse meaning that the average sum of square differences explained by the regression is 11.4 times higher than the sum of square differences from the error term so which is not explained by the regression in other words we're explaining with our model much more much more than we are not explaining
we are explaining variation variation in wages in wages with our variables that's what we're testing right the model is actually the independent variables that we're using with our variables which are education and IQ much more or 11 times 11.4 times more 11.4 times more than what we're not explaining than the unexplained variables than the unexplained variables the error terms than the error terms and I'm gonna write in brackets these are the unexplained this gives us the unexplained variation I wrote two E's I don't know why unexplained variation I hope this makes sense because always when you look at the test it has to make sense it has to have you know it has to have an intuitive sense so in this case we can see that it's a ratio of variation so it's much larger so it means that it has to explain more hope, hope this is clear now just like with any other test to give a definite conclusion we must compare it with a critical value and in our case we will have a critical value with a distribution f so an f critical value so to speak f critical value the significance level would be five percent that's usually the the convention and the degrees of freedom would be what we have in the test in the numerator because we have two degrees of freedom for the f test recall that that would be the number of parameters for the numerator and n minus p minus 1 for the denominator. So we would have p in the numerator degrees of freedom and n minus p minus 1 in the denominator. And if our f value is greater than the critical value that we find, then we would reject the null hypothesis. And what does that mean? Let's go back to the let's go back to the hypothesis that we wrote. Well, we would have enough evidence that at least one effect is significantly different from zero. In other words, we would have a significant joint effect of education and IQ on wages. So that would mean that we have a significant, significant joint effect of education and IQ on wage. Hope this makes sense and we are done.